On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, the U.S. government is concerned about Chinese cranes in America. I'm your host, Sal McCoglano, and welcome to today's episode. So, a story hit the Wall Street Journal entitled, Pentagon Sees Giant Cargo Cranes as Possible Chinese Spying Tools. Well, that's going to get the attention of what's going on with shipping, especially because we ran a similar story about this in February, not February last month, February a year ago. But it's great to see that the Wall Street Journal is on top of what's going on in the maritime industry. So we thought we'd take a look at the story and talk and give you a little bit more background on it. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. All right, let's go into this story about ship to shore cranes. So this is a Canadian Broadcasting Channel's uh, feature that talks about ship-to-shore cranes. I just want to use the video because it gives you a good demonstration of what we're talking about. Ship-to-shore cranes are fixed in ports throughout the United States and around the world. These are the large gantry-style cranes that you'll see that are used to move containers on and off ships. Uh, they are essential because most container ships, unlike the ones depicted here in the video, do not have their own cranes on board. So it's absolutely essential that the shore-based container cranes are utilized to move boxes off the vessels, particularly as container ships have gotten larger and larger in size, from several thousand TEUs to vessels of up to 24,000 TEUs. And as you see there, the operator sits within a glass enclosed cab and controls the movement of the containers on and off. A proficient container crane uh, operator can move between 30 to 50 containers an hour. It really depends on where the containers are on the vessel. You know, if they're close and high, they can get them off much quicker, but if they're far, uh, at the far side of the vessel and deeper, it takes longer. But these container cranes, these ship to shore or SDS cranes are absolutely essential. So if ship to shore cranes look a little bit familiar to you, that's because uh, the George Lucas in the Star Wars movies modeled his walkers, the uh, Adats, on ship to shore cranes. And actually the sci-fi connection to these vessels go quite a bit because the walker analogy actually goes to another sci-fi movie that actually has two analogies, and that is War of the Worlds, where we actually see Tom Cruise as a crane ship to shore crane operator who saves the world, once again testifying the fact that anyone in the maritime industry can be the savior of the world. Perhaps a little bit over the top, but I'm going to go with it. But anyway, back in February of last year, I ran this story. What if Chinese cranes stop moving American cargo? And this had to do with the fact that the FBI staged a, not a raid, but an investigation on board a Chinese vessel that was delivering ZPMC, this is the big company that builds these cranes in China, to the port of Baltimore. And the vessel in question was anchored off of Annapolis waiting for the correct tide to get under the bridge and into Baltimore. Uh, it was unclear why this, the FBI boarded the vessel. It was not clear if they were checking the cranes or checking the ships. The FBI has never really said one way or the other. Here is the story put out by the Wall Street Journal. And the story in itself says this, the U.S. officials are growing concerned that giant Chinese-made cranes operating in American ports across the country, including at several used by the military, could give Beijing a possible spying tool hiding in plain sight. Some national security and Pentagon officials have compared ship-to-shore cranes made by the China-based manufacturer ZPMC to a Trojan horse. While comparably well-made and inexpensive, they contain sophisticated sensors that can register and track the provenance and destination of containers, prompting concerns that China could capture information about material being shipped in or out of the country to support U.S. military operations around the world. So there's a lot about these cranes to be worried about. And, and the Wall Street Journal focuses on the military aspect. But let me be clear about the cranes first off. These cranes, and like many pieces of uh, equipment and machinery, have uplinks. Uh, the cranes receive data from the ports telling the operators in the crane what containers to get. Now, you still need a human to operate them, but there are uplinks. Plus, these are sophisticated machine machinery. And like all pieces of machinery, they have uplinks. They're connected through the internet for performance data, for maintenance, for everything. And so a lot of data is being collected by these cranes and also being sent to other places. 
And while there is a concern that, you know, there's a big red button in Beijing, you hit this button and all of a sudden 80% of the cranes in the United States ports go out. The other fear you have here, and I would argue this is the biggest fear, is a cyber attack on ports and hitting the cranes in particularly. These cranes are not isolated. They, they do have uplinks. And so therefore, a uh, cyber attack, whether it's China, ransomware, uh, who knows who, all have the potential to dismantle or hinder the operation of these ship-to-shore cranes in the ports. They can either turn them off, which would actually be the best case scenario, or in worst case, they remove safety measures in the cranes and the cranes overheat, they uh, go past their limits and do structural damage, which is of even worse potential because then you're not just ruining the software, you're ruining the hardware. And so concerns about this have existed for quite a while. And actually, we've been talking about this issue, as I mentioned, for over a year. So there's a story over from FreightWaves, John Gallagher. This is back in January of 2022. Supply chain pain may lurk in container crane bill. And one of the things that we saw is shortly after that issue that I mentioned in my previous one, we saw legislation being introduced. So the Port Crane Security and Inspection Act of 2022 was introduced by Carlos Jimenez, uh, from a Republican from Florida, which bans port cranes uh, sold under contract with countries considered a U.S. foreign adversary. That would include China, which is the largest manufacturer of ship-to-shore cranes from operating in U.S. ports. These cranes are everywhere, understand. If you look at a U.S. port, you will see ZPMMC cranes everywhere. Uh, the bullseye here is on ZPMC. There are just a handful of container crane manufacturers of large ship-to-shore cranes built to load and unload post panamax size vessels and larger, but one company dominates China ZPMC, which is estimated to control at least 70% of the market. As a state-controlled un company unburdened by the same profit-turning pressures of its international competitors, ZPMC can offer significant below-price prices, uh, below market prices for cranes that typically cost 10 million to 12 million or more. ZPMCs are operated in Los Angeles, New York, Virginia, Baltimore, Seattle, Miami, Houston, Charleston, South Carolina, Tampa, Jacksonville. I can, I can name a whole batch here that they operate in. So there's a ton of these cranes that are operating in there. And ZPMC doesn't just build these cranes, they deliver them. They bring them on the back of, of, of heavy lift vessels, fully assembled, ready to go. You just put them up on the dock and they are ready to go. And I should also mention not just the ship to shore cranes, but the smaller cranes in the port that are used, the, the translators that are used to move cargo among the stacks, a lot of them also come from ZPMC. And then you have this story, which again, flew below the radar. It doesn't get a lot of attention, but this is a Mike Schuller story from March of 2022. Cargo tech and con cranes abandoned $5 billion merger plan over competition concerns. The Finnish-based Cargotech and Concranes have canceled plans for a proposed merger after the United Kingdom competition regulators blocked the transaction. Over concerns, it would harm competition in the market for container handling equipment. The UK's Competition and Market Authority announced on Tuesday findings from its investigation into the proposed $5 billion deal. It goes on here. Container handling equipment is key to the smooth running of UK ports, and events in recent years have shown us how quickly problems in the supply chain can cause problems for UK consumers and businesses. Uh, this is from the chair of the CMA group, Martin Coleman. This is also because there is an Irish company that builds container cranes too. And so the fear here is if cargo tech and con cranes came together, it would constitute too large a monopoly, run the Irish firm out of business, and then the UK would be absolutely dependent on the Finns for their container cranes. Well, we've got the same issue in the United States, but more so because we're doing it with Chinese companies. And this just highlights the issue here in the shipping market. One of the things I've talked about consistently over the two years of this channel is how shipping market has consolidated, whether it's the shipyards. Again, 40% of all shipyards around the world have closed since 2009. 85% of all containers are handled by the 10 largest shipping companies in the world in three big, huge alliances. How the passenger ship market is in the hands, 75% at least, are in the hands of Carnival Norwegian and Royal Caribbean. And we're seeing a similar consolidation take place again in the tanker market 
after it was consolidated and then broken apart in the 70s and 80s when the Seven Sisters got out of shipping because of oil spills. This is a problem we're seeing across the ways. And when you look at China, you have to look at not only are they controlling the container crane market, but they're controlling container manufacturing, they're controlling container leasing. And, you know, with Costco, one of the largest container firms in the world, they control about 15% of container shipping out there. So there is a lot of elements in here we should be talking about. And concern about monopolies and control are an important one. And one of the things you see in recent legislation passed by the United States, particularly the Ocean Shipping Reform Act of 2022, is efforts to put regulations and oversight back into ocean shipping, which had been basically deregulated. It was the wild, wild west. And then you have this story, which was a really interesting one because I was searching ZPMC and this came up. Caltrans cuts corners to get Bay Bridge built. Now this is a 2014 story, but what was interesting about this story was it brought up ZPMC. I was unknown to me, but ZPMC was contracted to help replace steel and, br and bridge components in the San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge. This is way back in the stories of 2014, but this contract was made back in 2006. Uh, and it, the contract was awarded because it was making a cost effective and fast bid. And for $250 million, you had ZPMC come in and offer to do the job that was much lower than Americans. Cheaper steel, cheaper labor, and they were able to come in. And it just seems that ZPMC has built on this from rebuilding the Oakland, uh, the San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge to now proliferating cranes in U.S. ports. So what does this mean? Should we be taking the concern that the U.S. government has? Well, Will the Chinese cranes have ability to monitor and, and visualize containers coming in off? Potentially, yes. I think so. I think container cranes have that visualization. The problem you have is also what the heck's in the container. Uh, you have to have the data on the container. You would have to be able to pull that material up. It's kind of difficult to do. Uh, but it will give, uh, for example, a country like China that's right now fighting in a competition with other countries, Malaysia, Vietnam, to uh, ship goods to the United States, potentially an advantage in knowing what so kind of container capacities are there. Uh, container flows. Now, a lot of that data is open sourced anyway. You can find that out. But it does give the Chinese maybe a visibility on containers that most don't have. And since the U.S. military does ship a lot of cargo via containers through its maritime security program on 60 vessels that are in that program, it is a potential advantage for China to have it. However, the issue, I think, again, is a cyber issue that we keep missing. And this is not just China. It's Russia. It's, it's ransomware attacks. All of them potentially have exposure. And if you are networking together cranes from one, cons uh, one producer and you're sending updates in the software, you know, the same software is running across 70% of the cranes in the United States, that is a potential concern that you have. What happens when all of a sudden a malware, ransomware virus gets in? Back in 2016, uh, Maris got hit by the Napietia virus, a, uh, a uh, virus that was uploaded into its system as a result of what was going on between Russia and Ukraine. And because of the open source nature of ocean shipping, their network was all bridged together. And so that virus spread across the entire Maris network, ships, offices, uh, uh, ports, terminals, everything. And when the virus triggered, Everything on Maersk went out, except for one server in Lagos, Nigeria, which was offline because of a blackout. That was the only way they were able to rebuild their system. The system went out for a week. It cost them hundreds of millions of dollars. But that was at a period when there was a lot of capacity in the ocean shipping market. And while cargo was stuck on Maersk vessels, you can get your vessel, your cargo put on other vessels. What happens today if all of a sudden half the, the, the cranes in the U.S., go out of service. This is the supply chain crisis in a whole different fashion. When you go back to 2021 and you saw 2022 and you saw 100 ships lined up off of LA and Long Beach, the issue here wasn't the ships or the ship to shore cranes. The issue was in the terminals and moving the containers out of the terminals into the inland distribution system. This type of attack 
would cripple the ability to get containers in and containers out. That's imports and exports. And that is a concern that I think needs to be addressed. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it across social media, give it a big thumbs up, and if you can, support the page. How do you do that? Very simply. You can hit that super thanks button below where you can give directly to the page or head on over to Patreon and become a patron of the page, either monthly or yearly. You'll see a link come up at the very end of the video or down in the show notes below. Until our next video, this is Sal signing off.